I'm thankful to Honorable Vice Chancellor to be over here and the ex-principal, Dr. Malhotra, Dr. Shwan Singh, other colleagues who are over here and the participants. I know that you must have learned a lot in the one week workshop, which was multidisciplinary. And it was, as I was told the first day, it was needed. But today, education though has expanded, but at the same time, it has shrunken into a common uh, uh, sea, I will say, that uh, as the rivers merge in the sea, same way, the total education is a sea now. We cannot separate Ganga, Jamna over here or this subject, this one. Now I'll come back to the, my uh, topic as such. Uh, please uh, yeah, disable the screen sharing. Eh? Please, please help me in getting the screen sharing. Yes, yes, I'm getting, giving you, sir. Uh, given, sir, you can share. Just one Or it's take a little time. Just problem has come, just one minute. You see now? Hello? Sir, we can are see it. Are, yes, are sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It is visible. Yeah. Uh, as Dr. Mulhatra told me that I should talk something about the uh, corona, and everybody knows quite a bit now, just to uh, introspect where we are and what should be done. And uh, you have already talked about the vaccine. Let me say, this a non coronavirus SARS COVID 2, a pandemic outbreak causative agent is there. And uh, in fact, uh, in December 2019, a mysterious pneumonia with unknown etiology was reported in the city of Wuhan, which is a province of Hubei, China. And ICTV International Code of Virus Classification named the virus as severe acute uh, respiratory syndrome. Coronavirus 2, that is SARS CoV 2. In India, the first case of COVID 19 was reported to Kerala student who had just uh, returned from Wuhan, China on 30th January uh, 2020. Uh, as I told you, the uh, outbreak was from Wuhan, China. The seafood market in Wuhan, China, where the outbreak started sell seafood, chicken, bats, civet cats, and other wild game animals. 55% of the COVID-19 patients 
had a history of exposure to seafood market of one city. Now SARS-CoV-2 is a zoonotic virus and bats are the reservoir holes of SARS-CoV-2 and pangolin is considered might be the intermediate host of this very virus. However, uh, we are not sure and much more studies required about this one. But there is a, some feeling also, it might not be as you know, it might have been synthesized uh, by China or uh, some way. Uh, coronavirus uh, we are the largest group of positive sense single stranded RNA viruses. Uh, human coronavirus were first identified since the mid 1960s and 65, and they were named as the B814 by Tyrell and Bailey. But later on, this strain was lost in the laboratory. As a result, we cannot compare with the upcoming identification strains. At present, uh, seven human coronaviruses have been identified. These are 229E, OC43, and like that one. And these all HCOs belong to the subfamily coronaviridae. This is the, what is a schematic representation of taxonomy coronavirus. I'm not going to detail that uh, how these are there. But main historical problem of coronaviruses in what concerns the 21st century epidemics in 2012, there was a Middle East Respiratory Syndrome related coronavirus, which was named as MERSCOV. COV. And now in 2003, we had a severe uh, acute respiratory syndrome related coronavirus, which was a SARS COV, and uh, it was uh, named as SARS as such. And 2019, it was SARS COV2, which caused a coronavirus disease. We can't call it severe acute respiratory syndrome which earlier used to call. Now, because it's a very uh, mixed type of syndrome, so it's a name now as a coronavirus disease 2019. Now, different coronavirus in different outbreaks, different parts of the world. That is uh, SARS-CoV uh, in 2003, severe bats and uh, first from China, it is severe uh, respiratory syndrome. And COV, human coronavirus, HKV1, the new heaven virus, it was seen from mice, Hong Kong, China, and uh, coronavirus respiratory syndrome. And COVMS, Middle East respiratory syndrome related coronavirus, 2012. It was, came from camels and bats, Jeddah, Saudi Arabia, and they called the MERS disease. And SARS-CoV-2, which we are now having with us, which call a corona disease, uh, of course, the name severe acute respiratory syndrome which was started, now we call it corona disease. Uh, 2019, origin is considered to be bats uh, and uh, place is the Wuhan, China. You see that uh, at least from the four uh, of the three are from China and probably that's what the wildlife uh, source is. Now, this is the variant structure because when we talk about the uh, drug therapy or uh, the vaccine preparation, we are supposed to know the whole structure. That is the, out of these spikes, they are responsible for most of the function of our attacking the human cells. And then we have a envelope protein, then we have a nucleic aspect protein, uh, which include the RNA and uh, the lipid membrane, which cover this one RNA. This is what diagrammatic picture of the uh, genomic structure of the COV2. And uh, the major feature of the viral structure proteins as a true spike, which was a large one on the outside, is the S protein. It has two subunits, S1 and S2, because both of these units have their own function. A 150 KDA class 1 fusion protein, modified by N-linked glycosylation. S1 binding to the host cell receptors, what we call the AC receptors, and S2 fusion of viral and cellular membrane. First, the virus is uh, accepted with the receptors. The spike protein binds to the receptor, and then the, through the S2, it binds to the cellular membrane. Then there's a membrane protein uh, to which the spike binds, 25-30 KDA, integral type three membrane protein, necessary from membrane curvature, assembly of coronavirus particle, and even budding, there's a new viral formation. 
Let this envelop E protein, 8 to 12 kDa form, final cha ion channels by assembling the membrane necessary for electrochemical balance in subcellular compartments. And then uh, finally, we have a nucleocasmid protein, 349% amino acid. It uh, plays a role in the replication and transcription. Now, SARS-CoV-2, as I already told, is a positive sense uh, the uh, single stranded RNA, beta coronavirus 30 kb genome size, a viral protein up to 14 open leading frames, a 5 prime end, a single ORF encode, a polyprotein that uh, autoproteotically cleaves 16 nm uh, structure protein and uh, forms replicas transcriptive complex. The 16 protein replication transcription system, multiple enzymes, enzyme for genome replication, viral. RNA dependent RNA polymerase and other side such as endonucleosase, essential for the nucleic acid metabolism. And there are 13 operating frames from 3 prime end, including structure protein, spike, envelope, membrane, and nucleic aspect. Now, this is what uh, it looks like. There's a ORF1, ORF1B, and then there's a, a 3 prime cell. As I will told you, that this is how different proteins or different things are formed from this very genome. And not the genomic organization. It's a very complex. Uh, it produces the PDP for that protein, and then uh, so another protein like that, different protein are formed. And the molecular structure has already been determined of this very uh, virus. And that's how people are moving towards the uh, having the vaccine on different parts some are doing the membrane, some are doing the, uh, the this one, the mRNA, like that one, things are frequent. Now, these are the you know, functional proteolytic cleavage sites of 16 non structural proteins in ORF1 and B predictable. And these have been, by, by, by bioinformatics, at different uh, sites have identified that, how, as I told you, map, uh, that uh, map shows that how different portions can be cleaved from each other. And these are the cleavage sites. And this is how SARS-CoV-1, SARS-CoV-2 spike protein also uses the ACE2 receptor. And that is a very important one. And that's how this is the S2, uh, this S1 of the S1 protein. And this is the ACE receptor. This is how this binds over here. And then the whole thing starts. Because this is a viral structure with uh, this one spike protein. And this is the uh, cell, our cellular cell, AC2 receptor, and they bind over here. The spike protein has uh, the 150 KD, 300, uh, 3,820, 1,273 amino acids are there. And, uh, and, and this is the, uh, the SARS-CoV-2 RBD bound to the end terminal uh, peptide domain of AC2 is how the binding can take place over there with the AC2 receptor. This molecular work has been done. And uh, the very interesting part is there's an unexpected fluid cleavage site between S1 and S2 and between the boundary of the SARS CoV2, which is cleaved during biosynthesis. A novel feature which is separate from which uh, separates the uh, SO, uh, this. Uh, so, uh, COVID-19 from the earlier COVID-1 over the SARS-1. That's now anything what, well, what we found with the SARS-1 is not working in the COVID-19. This COVID and this is how spike protein conformation is there. And this is a closed conformation when it is not attacking the cell. But when it is to come to the bind to the cell, it will open over here and this binding will take place and then it uh, will allow the virus to enter the cell by binding to the membrane and through the channels. Because the, normally it's closed when it opens for a binding. And this is how transmission takes place, as I will told you, that this is SARS and COV2 diagrammatically, phylogenetically for similar, genomically quite similar to the SARS, like a bad COV, and by its a primary host is a bad, consumed as a food by a human being. And then when a human being comes, 
it's a direct contact uh, human host and then there's a human to human uh, transmission we don't need bats now for this one but there may be some uh, intermediate host in the beginning which we do not know uh, people talk about a pangolin but we, we are not sure about that one and this is how the transmission all over the world the stage one cases mostly imported from infected countries as i told you that uh, we had a boy uh, in kerala coming from china to wuhan and we detected in 30th january december 2019 and from there local transmission from positive individual took place uh, by the oil the droplets and uh, this how spread and this then came the stage 3 uh, in the sense of the community spreading not easy to detect the source of infection now because in this stage 2 we could find that uh, in whose contact it we came but in stage 3 it becomes quite difficult to find out that uh, from which individual has got it of course people are trying to find out the 64 relation and all those things are taking place but finally what is happening now probably uh, there is a lot lot of discussion we are already in the community spreading and we are not able to find from where the uh, person is getting infected at the moment and uh, because uh, uh, earlier we used to say well, they, these were the contacts but now we are not able to say that one and we hear about the entry stage 4 as it is there in us uh, russia and brazil situation we are almost in the same situation now coming to replication uh, pathophysiology is sars cov2 and this is how the uh, when virus enter uh, this is this is a binding of the uh, spike protein with the uh, ac2 and then uh, there is a uh, endocytosis and of course there is a complex mechanism i am not going to talk about that one and any if we can block any of these stage then probably the treatment can be there now this is how a uh, different sars cov2 entry where host cell proteases may activate sars2 cov2 uh, the spikes and uh, now what happens basically we are talking about a strong immune system okay. because the sars cov2 when it comes to the uh, the one uh, by sneezing or uh, by respiration it uh, is taken by the people and goes to the uh, lungs uh, through of course nose and then the whole immune system get activated there is a alveolar epithelium type 2 other cells monocyte macrophages th1 t17 and the pro inflammatory cytokines it's a complex system which works of course uh, b cells and t cells have to play a major role in that one and uh, major viral host infection is a delayed or suppressed type of interferon response during initial infection that is why infection spreads because the uh, response is delayed and uh, then viral replication triggers hyper inflammatory condition this said uh, as the number of viruses increase the infl- inflammatory conditions increase and a person feels uncomfortable because the alveoli have so become so disturbed and they they cannot take oxygen as such so there's influx of activated neutrophils inflammatory monocyte macrophages and that's how Cell will like get disturbed. So Th1, Th17, uh, Th1 and Th7 induced specific antibodies are produced, but they are not produced immediately. There is a delay. That is how the alveoli gets uh, attacked very fast. This is how in the early stage how the alveoli look like over here, and they are general macrophages activated T cell. Very simple. But as the virus multiplies. now what are neutrophils and cells then the lot many uh, this uh, hyaline membrane is formed in the to the activation hyaluronidase hs2 inhibitor i can see and this is how uh, the covid-19 progression immune boosting uh, interferon na or antisera non sphere immune protection as the there's a uh, external immune protection then vitamin d and the sphere inflammatory de- Also, inflammatory damage is there. The multifunctional role of interferon in the SARS-2. Interferons are playing a major role 
for this one because when we are talking about angiotensin II, uh, which are the main receptors of the virus, and that they are responsible for causing uh, because the angio angiotensin II protects them. But uh, when it is uh, covered, uh, the acute uh, lung injury occurs, and uh, this is a complex system which works over here. This is a uh, from a magazine how the things happen over here. This is a normal alveoli, the normal alveoli, and this is seed. And then when uh, this is no healthy one, then this is an infected one, when virus goes inside. And then it's a moderate infection, uh, wherein the alveoli gets, uh, uh, has uh, so many things inside, neutrophils and other things, and uh, they do not allow uh, the much of the oxygen uh, to be taken in, because space has been already occupied. And then uh, in the sphere case, most of the alveoli get damaged, and that's how the person uh, is uh, moving towards uh, uh, his ultimate uh, of this life. But if we, if we can prevent at this stage, or at this stage, then survival is there. But at this stage, survival is very difficult, and that is how the things are to work. So we have to see, number one, nothing happens, person remains healthy, or if we get taken up, we should take a precautionary measures that doesn't spread, and uh, our alveoli remains quite uh, healthy. I mean, not fully healthy, but uh, we, should, we have to protect the damage which is caused by the virus in the for the sphere cases. And this is, uh, we have a clinical presentation of COVID-19, asymptomatic infection, uh, because now almost all of us might have uh, come across the virus, but uh, some of us may be asymptomatic, absence of clinical signs, symptoms of disease, and normal chest X-ray or CT scan as a positive test for SARS-CoV-2. The mild infection, upper airway symptoms such as fever, fatigue, myalgia, cough, sore, throat, runny nose, sneezing. Pulmonary clinical examination, normal. Some cases may have fever and others may experience gastrointestinal symptoms such as nausea, vomiting, abdominal pain, and diarrhea. When uh, it moves to the moderate infection, clinical signs of pneumonia occur, persistent fever, initially dry cough, which becomes productive, may have wheezing or crackles, pulmonary aspiration, but shows no respiratory distance. Some individuals may not have symptoms or clinical signs, but chest scans reveal typical pulmonary lesions. Severe infection, initial respiratory symptoms may be associated with gastrointestinal symptoms such as diarrhea. The clinical deterioration usually occurs in a week with the development of dyspnea, hypoxemia, there's a blood oxygen saturation. And uh, then clinical infection, patients can quickly deteriorate to acute respiratory syndrome or respiratory failure and may present a shock and encephalopathy, myocardial injury, heart failure, coagulatopathy, acute kidney injury, and multiple organ dysfunction, and ultimately, uh, the end comes. Now, what is the current international status of COVID-19? Uh, countries, uh, countries' case distribution. Now, distribution cases in India is a, now it's not, today, it's a one, uh, uh, one, this is 11,55,000. Now, it's not 11,90,000. It's a 55,000 uh, as per the 11 o'clock news. And 7.63% uh, of the world uh, population we have. Now, in Brazil, uh, this is uh, 14.32. Russia, 5.30. And uh, then other countries like that. But USA, 26.60% of the total cases of the world are in USA, that's number one, and the Brazil, number two, India, like number three, and Russia, like you can see these one, and then other countries, this one. Now, five top, uh, five infected countries with a case data along with China. And you see that uh, the uh, in USA, how many active cases are there? And uh, then we have recovered cases, diseased cases are, are there. So you see that, and then, uh, in the case, you see that in uh, India, uh, actually the death rate is very low. In China, they are not reporting that one. And even South Africa, 
uh, we, we, they are not reporting the how many deaths are occurring, and Russia is also doing, but we know that in America, the disease cases are much more than uh, even Brazil or in India. And the countries that are COVID, you see that uh, yesterday, 11 point, uh, at 11.59, the almost uh, all countries in the world are infected. You can just see small pockets where the uh, infection has gone, not gone. So that's why it's a global pandemic that we see today. Now, now in India, as I told you, the ge geographical uh, demographic distribution among Indian population, the gender distribution COVID-19 for India, 24% are female. It's more in the males, the 76% male. The males are most in risk gender in COVID-19 as compared with the female. As per PIV data, 76 per males were infected in total were positive cases at common female, that is 24%. The recovery rate in India is 62.61% at common disease case rate, that is 2.45%, and actual cases 34.92%. Now, in India, the patients that you start recover more due to the lifestyle and food habit and uh, which play a more important role for the increment incre immunity, or we can say food and spices, new food act as an immunity booster. And that's how I told the two days back that we, are, we have gone back to Indian culture. It has revived, rather it's, it was a challenge and it's a challenge for world, but India has faced it because it's a very rich culture which we had and moreover our uh, immunity is very strong. As uh, you see in the rural areas, how children take bath in the uh, dirty ponds where uh, even the, the buffaloes are also watching and they're doing, and they are very strong, the immunity is very strong. And that's why in India, the death rate is very low. And uh, because we, we take our food and spices in the booster, the world has recognized now, uh, even my, I know my uh, children are there in America, and they are getting these uh, kavas and see, and the rate of the kava constituents have increased 100 times in, the, in that country. And uh, in Indian population, but age distribution uh, is a very, uh, see, uh, this, uh, you see the 30% is in the, the 7% from the, up to 40 years. And, uh, the 30%, 41 to 60 years, and 63% uh, of 60 and above. And that is what uh, is a very uh, problematic. And then uh, for COVID-19 confirmed cases in India, this is what happens that uh, we have from 60 to 70, uh, very uh, the people at 23.4 percent. So as the Indian population for disease cases, Due to COVID-19 uh, is uh, quite high. The more person age group for more than 60 years are diseased due to COVID-19. That is 63% as compared with the zero to 40 years of age group. The age group shows most infection rate and most infected cases are found to recover from COVID-19. Age are the most important factor during COVID-19 infection. The age group of first years having least infectivity rate is 3.7% only. And uh, the age group 31 to 40 years are more susceptible for SARS infection than 23.4, succeeded by age group 21 to 30 years, only 20.9 percent. And uh, there's a different clans uh, in top four states in India. We have a, you know, uh, there are different clans of these ones, and they have a different distribution uh, in the different populations. And this is how number of active recovered cases as on 21st July. And today we find the Maharashtra having maximum number of infections, second most infected states in India, Tamil Nadu, and third one is Delhi. And uh, this is uh, from the Ministry of Health and Human Welfare. And uh, you see in India, we were uh, worried that uh, not much uh, laboratory testing was done. But today we know that uh, more than one 1.4 crore, 40 crore, uh, 40 lakh, 1 crore, 40 lakh has been already done. And of that, only 1 lakh uh, 
11 lakh 68 have been found to be positive and uh, the number of tests performed uh, is uh, this one and then we have the number of positive cases. The total number of total testing, uh, number of testing were done till 21st July, that is today, are 1 lakh, uh, 1 crore, 40,000, like that one, which 11 lakh should get case of found positive, which contains symptomatic as well as asymptomatic. This is from ICMR New Delhi. And uh, the different tests performed, the detection SARS, that's a serology testing, and which is a rapid test based on antibody detection from sputum and nasopharyngeal swab larva and uh, post sexual SARS CO2 antigen test for antibody based detection of viruses. It's a like ELISA test and then molecular testing based replicate acid uh, turned from blood, serum, and, and uh, saliva also. Current infection CO2 is uh, the uh, what we reverse. Uh, this uh, PCR is done over there and uh, DNA sequence done by hybrid method. And it's a very uh, it's a cumbersome, whereas now these tests are very simple and for this one. Now, there are, since we don't have any proved drug, that there are certain therapeutic options which are taken and some have, uh, people have succeeded in doing that one. This is a remedy sphere, allowed to treat severe COVID-19 patients. Delta and children, both in US, have to be uh, proliferate. Uh, chloroquine and hydroxychloroquine is again a very tricky one because those who are already having a heart problem, they are not supposed to take this one because uh, there may be some uh, problem in the heartbeat over here. And uh, many countries are still using it. And uh, interferon alpha 1 in a cup for the season, routine cortisone is not suggested. It can use in low or moderate doses in a short period of time. Now, conversant plasma therapy, which is uh, uh, becoming very popular in this country, and uh, we know that in Chandigarh also, uh, quite a number of uh, patients have been treated by conversant plasma therapy, uh, but uh, it's not a proved one because it, there's, there may be some complications by plasma therapy that the plasma may be containing some other uh, materials which we have not, unless we verify that one, we can say that chemostat misylate, a drug for pancreatitis, inhibits protein involved in viral binding, then maxathesazone, which is considered quite uh, uh, favorable by WHO. The initial trial, trial results from the United States, dexamethasone, a corticosteroid, can be a life saving. Uh, then, lipidovir or retrovir, combination with ribavirin, used in initial therapy of SARS. A patient, whereas in the case of COVID 19 patient, no benefit and natural outcomes has been observed. This is now, and then uh, uh, people are trying to use a monocular body uh, by fusing, by different equipment, or trying proteolysis and packaging. All those things are being uh, done for by using these drugs or to find a way. I'm not sure. But a very important thing which uh, our, the, our uh, host to talk about the vaccine. Yes, there are about 160 vaccines being tried word over. And of these 23 are in a quite uh, uh, successful stage. And we don't, we don't know which one will come first, but definitely uh, India is also playing a major role in that one. Now, but the complications which we are talking about is that traditional vaccine development takes multiple years where we have a clinical phase one. So first you pre-clinical development, uh, selecting the molecule, then uh, doing your experiment on the rats and then the monkeys, and then subjecting the, based on the success rate, subjecting to a human trial phase one, uh, which has about 32, 33% failure rate, then phase two, which might have a 70 plus failure rate, and then they're passed on to phase three, wherein the failure rate is not much, and then it is sent for the success, licensure, which takes two to three years and maybe more. But since the very, uh, we are in emergency situation, the pandemic uh, vaccine development model is the overlapping phases uh, because the one phase one is going on, they start a phase two parallel or phase three like that one. So define target product profile, pre-clinic development, assay development, they're all done parallel 
That is why uh, within three, four months, the, uh, the Oxford and other people, Veda, the, uh, this modern, Moderna, or uh, even India is uh, quite successful in uh, produce, moving to the phase two and phase three for that one and then licensure. And this is what we call hybrid model, adding new control human infection model, provides sporting data, does not accept accelerate initial timeline. So manufacture SARS CoV-2 challenge, strain, engage communities and infection, web SARS CoV-2 same when disease character better, known rescue drug available, and begin testing or vaccine model. So we have moved from this one to these ones, wherein uh, we can be uh, we can have vaccine uh, very soon and probably the way we are moving uh, at least uh, 16 as I told you uh, 23 are at a higher level of which about six are uh, in the almost final stage as the news came yesterday that Oxford one has a, has a quite a stage and India is a partner to that one and similarly the back on this uh, Indian Hyderabad one is also in a, a final stage. Now, the strategy, what we call that the receptor binding domain uh, has to be altered, but there are different uh, procedures that the RNA vaccine, DNA vaccine, recombinant protein vaccine, uh, then uh, vector vaccine, inactivity vaccine, live attendant vaccine. Now, we are in India, we are working the inactivity vaccine, and this is how the process goes on. That's a uh, we have a, a GMP uh, good uh, process development, then uh, clinical trials, phase one, phase two, phase three, licensure, then it goes to the uh, regulatory agencies, and then the regulatory agency get tested, and then uh, it is given uh, along with the, uh, to the populations, uh, but that will take a little more time. So what is the, ox the what I talk about, the success uh, of the vaccine, Oxford, AstraZeneca, Serum, which is a, a partner, Serum Institute of India is a partner to that one, which is genetically modified adenovirus, non replicating viral vector containing SARS CoV 2 spike protein. It's a protein from the same uh, vac the virus, and the process is a promising result. And Moderna is using mRNA 1273. Um, mRNA injected into the cell mimics the outer surface like proteins of SARS-CoV-2, and here the vaccine is a quite successful. Then uh, co-vaccine, Bharat Biotech Hyderabad, we have inactivated strain of old SARS-CoV-2, Biotech, that's Hyderabad and ICMR, and also National Institute of Virology, Pune. And then Zydus Cadilla Healthcare Limited, again, plasma DNA-based uh, vaccine is being prepared over here. But till the vaccine comes, can we be then key uh, can we put our population to all these things? No, we have to see, save ourselves. We have to save ourselves. When we save ourselves, we are saving, saving others also. Because if we don't exude the divided particles in our breathing, uh, cough, then we are saving others also, besides saving ourselves. So we have to wear masks, wear gloves, wash our hands and keep distance. And that's what precaution we have to take till we have a vaccine. But this was just an overview of uh, the uh, coronavirus, and I've tried to give it data up till today on this one. But friends, as uh, Dr. Taksam was talking about the research, that definitely, how could we do this one? How could uh, India compete with others? Because we have a very strong brain. We have a very, very fertile brain in this country. And uh, because India is a young country, we are innovator. As I told you in the beginning, in the last uh, two days back, that our science has been very strong. Our total culture is science-based. And we have been innovating. The innovate, our festivals, innovative. Our food habit, innovative. Our dress habit, innovative that how you can remain healthy. But we had forgotten those things and we have adopted a Western culture. And by adopting that, eating pizza and uh, what not, what not, and you know that pizza uh, contains maida and it gets 
uh, or even the uh, meat, especially the beef, it, uh, it, it uh, gets stuck in the colon. It doesn't have much fiber and uh, it ferments over there, produce a free radical and those free radicals cause DNA breaks in the colon and that is why in the meat eaters, the incidence of cancer is much more, but not in those uh, who are eating vegetables. Most of the cruciferous family, there's the gopi, sarsom, etc., they are the free radical sequencers. And anything which produces free radical, supposedly we take, take something and uh, it produces free radical, is a toxin which can produce cancer. But the vegetables will, uh, the, uh, the free radical sequencers will eat those up and will not allow the, them to break the DNA. So it is a protection uh, in the vegetarians. In Punjab, we eat sarso ka saag and makki ki roti. You know what the purpose is? Because sarso is a brassica, is a very important uh, for absorbing metals. Because it grows in the roadside and we have a lot much uh, metals from the coal tar and all those things and to absorb them. So that, similarly, when we eat uh, the sarso, any metal oils which we have we taken in, they will get absorbed by sarso and uh, the fiber in this sarso will, uh, along with makki roti, will swell that one and our uh, intestine will be clean in the morning so there will be no constipation. So that's what our food was. Or even we had been nature leveling. That is why uh, our all, jitra uh, bhi devi devta hai, sabke vahan janwar hai. Chai wo ganesh ji hai, छोटा सा चूहा है अरे इतने मोटे गणेशी चूहे पे कैसे बैठ सकते हैं बट नहीं दे हैव शोन द इंपॉर्टेंस ऑफ रैट एंड आई कम टू माय वेरी कॉमन एग्जांपल द लॉर्ड शिवा का परिवार भगवान शिव का परिवार पूरा इकोसिस्टम है उसमें प्लीज समक सर एक्सक्यूज मी सर प्लीज प्लीज समक सर देयर आर देयर आर अदर रिसोर्स पर्सन सर सो व्हाट आई एम सेइंग that we are innovators, we, our culture has been innovative. Let's we make innovation as a part of our research. We should do research which is full of innovation and even we get a, all answers by by my meeting that what animals are doing, what plants are doing, and we will mimic them and solve our problem. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. It was, I think, uh, about Corona. From A to Z, you have given everything. It was a full-length paper, uh, whereas uh, your blessings uh, are required at this moment. So, sir, I think uh, what we have done during these 